with pop singers releasing songs with lyrics like I will sleep when I die and celebrities like DJ Khaled bragging about the bags under his eyes on Snapchat, it's no wonder that the world thinks that sleeping less is something to be championed. In fact, for me, for a lot of my life, this was how I lived and this was how I thought. Turns out that things are not as simple as they seem. I have this great book. It's called The Sleep Revolution. It was very recently released by Ariana Huffington of the Huffington Post, a very influential networker and uh, entrepreneur. The point is, I wanted to share with you 10 of the best sleep hacks, basically techniques. I don't even know if they're really hacks. Technically, they are. Uh, on improving your sleep, sleeping more, sleeping better, and getting to sleep quicker. All sorts of sleep hacks so that you feel more energized, more focused, and can accomplish more. Simple, but effective. Number one, avoid any form of blue light at least an hour before you go to sleep. So what's blue light? It's a form of light that's emitted from electronic devices, electronic screens, as well as lamps. A Harvard Med study found that people who used an e-reader before going to sleep took longer to fall asleep, had a later timing with their circadian rhythm, and had reduced morning alertness. Harvard sleep researcher Steve Lockley found that just 8 lux of light, which is less than that of an ordinary lamp and only twice that of a nightlight, is enough to affect you. Dr. Dan Siegel, a clinical professor of psychiatry, found that just exposing your eyes to a stream of photons is telling your brain to stay awake, to not secrete melatonin, which is crucial for sleep, and basically to stay awake and not go to sleep. Number two, sleep more to increase athletic performance. Now, if you're not an athlete, the same things apply because we all have bodies and biology works in a similar fashion. But athletes, listen up for sure. Cherry Ma of the Stanford Sleep Disorders Clinic and Research Lab had 11 members of the Stanford basketball team participate in this study. Basically, she first measured how much they slept. They slept about 6.5 hours average. And then for the next five to seven weeks, she asked them to sleep as much as they could, a minimum of 10 hours. Now, they didn't hit that. On average, most of these uh, players slept about 8.5 hours. But here are the results of that increase in sleep. Their sprint time went up by 0.7 seconds. Their free throw shooting went up by 9%. Their three-point shooting increased by 9.2%. Now, there's a ton more studies like this in the book, but I guess you can already kind of see the point. People would kill to shred a second or increase any level of stat that they have in sports just by a little bit. And maybe you're not in sports, you're not an athlete, but the same things apply to how sharp you are and how well you do, whether you're running a business, whether you're working for a business or anything else. Golden State Warriors' Andre Iguodala used to stay up really late watching TV and then wake up early to hit the gym. One day he got a sleep therapist and adjusted his sleep to a consistent eight hours per night. His points per minute went up 29%, his free throw percentage increased by 8.9%, his three point shot percentage more than doubled, his turnovers decreased 37% per game and his fouls dropped by 45% and he was named the 2015 finals MVP. I did some research on highly successful CEOs, executives, as well as top athletes. Now, there were many CEOs who slept off very few hours of sleep, yet there was a lot of other CEOs who slept a great amount and valued their sleep and knew how important it was. These included Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, who sleeps eight hours a day, Campbell Soup CEO Denise Morrison, also eight hours a day. As far as athletes go, LeBron James apparently sleeps 12 hours a day and he's one of the best basketball players of all time. And Roger Federer, one of the best tennis players of all time, says that if he doesn't get at least 11 to 12 hours a night, it's not right. Number three, very simple. Having trouble getting to sleep? Meditate to get to sleep faster. 
A 2009 Stanford study found that a six-week mindfulness meditation course helped people who had trouble sleeping fall asleep twice as quickly, in 15 rather than 33 minutes. I mean, if you can save that every night, it may not seem like a lot, but over the course of a year, you have just saved yourself a ton of time because you get to sleep quicker and you don't have to waste time trying to get to sleep and you get more sleep, actual sleep, not trying to fall asleep. Long story short, you've now saved hundreds of hours of trying to get to sleep over the course of just one year. Number four, sleep seven to nine hours a day. What I got from the book was that a uh, basic recommendation is that the ideal sleep time is between seven to nine hours a night. This was based off the American Academy of Sleep Medicine as well as the Sleep Research Society who have examined thousands of peer-reviewed articles and determined the optimal amount of sleep for each age group. Basically, if you're a baby, you need 12 to 15 hours. As a kid, you need 9 to 11 hours. As a teen, it starts to shorten 8 to 10 hours. And as an adult, it's about 7 to 9. And that chart is also updated with the National Sleep Foundations. Number five, use naps to supplement sleep. According to a study by Sorbonne University in Paris, short naps lower stress and boost immune response. The study co-author, Bryce Farrett, said that a 30-minute nap can reverse the hormonal impact of a night of poor sleep. That's, of course, not saying you should have nights of poor sleep and then just substitute naps to make up for it. Just that naps can help. Number six, this one's a big one. Avoid alcohol and caffeine before bed. And to be precise, at least six hours before going to sleep. A 2013 study from Wayne State University and Henry Ford Hospital found that consuming caffeine even six hours before bed can decrease sleep by as much as one hour. Most people think of alcohol as a sedative, but according to a 2015 study by the University of Melbourne, it does initially, but then it changes and switches and acts as a sleep disruptor for the rest of the night. The quality of sleep you get after consuming alcohol is significantly altered and disrupted. A study from the London Sleep Center confirmed that all doses of alcohol, no matter how big or small, caused some form of disruption in the second half of your sleep. And for me, and maybe for you, caffeine is one of those things that you may have never even realized a factor into your equation. And for me, that was the case. I realized I was consuming soda or some form of caffeine, whether it was tea or something else, maybe it's coffee for you, six hours or close to bedtime. And that was causing me to not be able to sleep as well or get to sleep. So change it up. You will be surprised at the results. Number seven is more so along the lines of those sleep hacks. This one is basically to drink cherry juice to increase sleep time. A 2014 Louisiana state study found that participants who drank cherry juice twice a day for two weeks slept an average of 85 minutes each night, more than those who just drank a placebo. And if you don't know what a placebo is, it's basically when you tell these people, oh, it's cherry juice, but it's not actually cherry juice. It's just a fake cherry juice. And it's used as a control in experiments to compare the results of the actual cherry juice to. A major reason for this was melatonin and tryptophan. Again, as I mentioned, melatonin is incredibly important and its production is very important for a good night's sleep. It helps you fall asleep. And melatonin is a sleep-wake cycle hormone. And guess what? Cherries are effectively very high in that compound. Eight, simple, but maybe not that hard to do. Avoid spicy foods before bed. Similar stuff, Australian researchers found that participants who ate Tabasco sauce or mustard before bed took longer to fall asleep. Nine, avoid high fat diets. Researchers found that rats that were put on a high fat diet suffered from more fragmented sleep. It was also linked to excessive daytime sleepiness. The founder of the Santa Monica Wellness Center, Patricia Fitzgerald said that the number one weakness after 20 years of experience at her foundation of her patients was ice cream. So guys, if you're overweight, if you're obese, if you're eating a lot of high fat foods or ice cream, see if you can cut this out, find healthy alternatives that taste 
pretty good as well. It can really help you with your sleep. Number 10 is to exercise to sleep better and to supplement sleep. As I've mentioned in previous videos as well as future videos, exercise is a keystone habit and is one of those habits that not only increases your happiness, your focus, your energy levels, a ton of things, but also it is one of those habits that acts as a gateway habit so that you can form other great habits which will snowball into a successful life. A Bellarmine University in Oregon State study found that regular physical exercise may serve as a non-pharmaceutical alternative to improving sleep. And that is only if you meet the basic recommended guideline of 150 minutes of moderate exercise a week. 2013 study from Northwestern University found that exercise added 45 minutes of extra sleep, but it took another four months before the full benefits started to kick in. Again, the point is that exercise is one of those things that you can really kill multiple birds with one stone. It can really be used as an effective way of doing a lot of things and altogether being highly effective in a lot of things. I mean, you look better, you attract more people, you're more focused, you're more energetic, you're happier. Again, studies have shown all these things. And it doesn't happen overnight. Again, it may seem daunting to get 150 minutes per week but if you cut it down to per day that's around 20 minutes per day heck just start at five minutes per day and just keep it consistently and that will just over time as i mentioned earlier it doesn't happen overnight the full benefits kick in later on hope you like this video of course if you're new to this channel this channel is all about self-development and success you can hit the subscribe button below for free updates every thursday otherwise i will see you in my next video